Well, hello again from Kingston. Well, we've seen some significant changes this week. Perhaps the most obvious of which are the road markings we've seen on both sides of the, uh, the bridge. Stay with us until the end if you want to see some beautiful nighttime views of the bridge and of course the wildlife. Please consider subscribing and thanks for watching. I'll catch you at the end. Monday opened bright with the arrival of the crane that would remove the LR1200. In fairly short order, Items were being repositioned and some even returned from storage to join the main body. The scale of this massive crane can be judged by watching the men inside the boom. Lifting the very heavy sections is a highly controlled operation. followed naturally by the whole process of removing the lift straps. And while transports are awaited, the lift crane can take a break. A stone's throw away, around the east holding pond, sharp landscaping, continued laying topsoil to cover the surrounding slopes. No easy task on this steep-sided area. Beneath some distinctive clouds, work continued on the bridge to remove the brackets that supported temporary walkways. In the middle of the bridge, above the working excavators, the crew from AMG Metals was measuring up and installing the final sections of guardrail. As the trucks removing gravel kept rolling by, the specialists from Black and MacDonald were busy on the West End installing cameras over the traffic signals at the intersection with Ascot Road. And I think it probably goes without saying at this stage that gravel removal from the temporary causeway continued throughout. Hello Dallas! Tuesday saw the arrival of the massive transporter for the cab of the LR1200. Turning it around on Gore Road took skill and experience. Backing it down to the crane was no picnic either. There are preparations then to be ready for loading. And there are plans to be made over a coffee. But before very long the transport is positioned but then it only remains to stow the back strap and secure the load. A look around the site reveals just how very large these massive cranes are and how many outloads they require. Before very long though Nancy is on Gore Road and then she's off up the road round in the corner onto Highway 15, heading for North Bay. Continuing topsoil work on the east side can sometimes involve the removal of spoil to create a suitable surface. Bracket removal from the temporary walkways is another ongoing process. And generates a steady stream of brackets leaving the site. On the south side of the bridge, where brackets also have to be removed, 
there was an interesting sighting of the navigation lights that will be positioned over the channel. A steady flow of crane parts left the site. AMG continued installing railings. But the biggest change of the day was the painting of the vehicle lanes on the bridge by online pavement markings and maintenance. Wednesday saw the departure of more crane parts. Before very long, it was the turn of the two massive tracks. Every lift of this magnitude involves careful planning and a full understanding by all the parties involved. Loading the second track involved lifting and turning it before backing up its transport trailer to meet it. Accurate positioning of the load is essential to ensure appropriate weight distribution. And of course with this crew Everything went smoothly and well. AMG continued their railing installation. Whilst below and beside them on the river, boat crews were busy repositioning turbidity curtains. Another busy vessel seen on the river was the Kingston Fireboat, responding to a report of a vessel fire. Work continued to remove temporary safety structures from around Pier 20. And a drone-friendly team from Signebec in Ottawa prepared and installed several new signs. On and around Gore Road and Point St. Mark Drive, Thursday had a very cold start, but it marked a major effort to produce pavement markings on Gore Road and the junction at Point St. Mark Drive. This involves a lot of marking up, masking and taping. The bright green anti-skid paint used on the AAA intersections must be thoroughly mixed. Then it's poured on spread and rolled to create a texture. With the whole process repeating itself for each arm of a junction. It may look easy, but there's no room for error. And trust me, it's a skilled task. By the way, AAA describes a junction designed to accommodate all ages and abilities. With all the crane parts gone, the eastern section of the temporary causeway is largely clear. And the removal of brackets from site is in high gear. The same can be said for the removal of gravel from the western side of the causeway. On Friday, it was the turn of the West End to get some pavement marking attention. And that involved online pavement marking and maintenance, deploying a brand new machine. The Aquadyne Series 2 road cleaner is like sending a squad of pressure washers down the road. Another commitment obliged me to miss the work in progress but I was able to see the finished results. And they look rather good. I did see Black and McDonald move a couple of lampposts yesterday, 
which was done skillfully and very smoothly. Although the pavement marking activity brought a halt to any gravel removal, one excavator remained very busy preparing for the next phase. And if you've held on this long, you certainly deserve to see some of these beautiful nighttime views. Now it's time for wildlife. Well, that was quite the week, I think you'll agree. And there's more to come. The furniture arrived for the bridge this week, and we'll probably see some of it placed next week, as well as other interesting and unusual topics. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.